What's up, Internet? This is Rambling Josh, and you're watching another episode of Let's Play Ogre Battle 64. Today, we want to take the Theodoricus Mine. Uh, so, this battle's obviously taken quite a while. It's been... this is the third episode I've spent on it. Um, battles in this game tend to take a while. Most of them probably won't be quite this bad. Uh, battles towards the end of the game might take this long, but I spent a lot of the previous episodes just explaining stuff. So the next... once I kind of got the basics out of the way, a battle should go a little bit faster. Why are you doing this? Freedom? Freedom from what? There's no freedom in death! So now this is the uh, battle boss, or the enemy leader, or whatever you want to call it. And in these fights, all you have to do is take down the leader to win. But even if you do the most damage, if you fail to take down the leader, you're, it's, you're considered uh, the loser. I managed to take out Stabilo in one engagement, and I win. He is defeated. So we get some nice little fireworks. Congratulations! You get some soldier reserves that you can use if you want, because you it is possible to run out, although it's extremely unlikely. You get some money, which is called goth in this game. And you get a treasure, which is usually uh, the enemy leader's weapon. But sometimes that's not the case. I'm not telling you. Oh no! Not the prince! <laughs> you fools! It's a trap! Well, revolution and freedom do tend to go hand in hand, so I guess that makes sense. I guess it's a good thing they did dispatch the rookies over here then. They, they can send the real force to. Uh. Bleh, Yumiel. Get Yumiel. Uh, I'm gonna go save Yumiel all on my own. Information does tend to be useful. I don't know, send a messenger? Hugo, what the heck are you doing all the way out here? You're the tactician, aren't you supposed to like... sit in the meeting room, the, the strategy room, sipping tea or something? But we're just rookies. Shouldn't it be the job of like... Someone with actual experience? Like, shouldn't you let the the big boys do the important stuff? Here's my advice. That's very good advice, Hugo. Thank you. And so now the uh, you can see that the, the calendar has advanced to Sombra 10. It started off at uh, Sombra 1 at the beginning of the game. The date just kind of advances as you move uh, between places. Every dot can, counts as one day. And time also passes during the battle. And uh, as time goes by, you know, the, the calendar advances and the, uh, the month goes up. I think there's like 14 months in uh, the Zedaginian calendar. Well, we can find out. Let's go to the Hugo Report. This is kind of like the Brave story in uh, Final Fantasy Tactics. It's got a whole bunch of like uh, information you can read up on. Um, I think there's something on the calendar. Right? 
This is a good place to read up on all the basics if you can't wait for me to explain them or whatever. Uh, it doesn't look like there's anything on the calendar. And you can view all the stuff that's happened uh, up to this point and stuff. Now, the, the date only matters for exactly one reason. And that reason is um, your birthday. Because you're kind of a big deal in this world. I mean, not yet, we're just kind of trainees or whatever. But eventually we'll be a big deal, obviously. I mean, Magnus is kind of the main character, so that goes without saying. But important stuff happens on your birthday. And it's not really obvious that it even happens, but if you know that it ha it's going to happen, then it's kind of important. So let's see, if we go back to the Hugo report... Oh, I thought... I thought it gave information on people. Oh, whatever. Oh yeah, if, if you go to an area like the, uh, where there was a battle, um, you can select this little hourglass and that lets you uh, return to the area to like walk around and go to all the towns and do some shopping and stuff if you need be. And you can also encounter uh, like wild monsters and stuff that you can try and uh, invite to your party. Uh, I can't do it yet, but you, um, there's, there's also a way from the world map to just uh, select training. Um, so you don't need to fight uh, like wild monsters if you want to get experience, which is good because that would be a very bad method of getting experience. But um, yes, yeah, so you can. Uh, eventually, we unlock the ability to do training. We can't do that yet. Oh, okay. Look, we're in Fogo. So my birthday is Fogo 22. So our, my birthday should have passed now. See, Fogo 22, happy birthday! Magnus turned 19. So, if we hit the L button, we can view our birthday party. Right now, we don't really know a whole lot of people, so there's not really many people here. Happy birthday! Happy birthday! Happy birthday! And every birthday, you get a gift. The more, like, important people you join onto your force, the, the better your, uh, these, the, the more interesting their birthday scenes are. Right now, there's just a bunch of faceless people. And the items that you get for your, uh, most birthdays aren't all that important, but every 10th birthday is, very, you get very good items for, like, 20, 30, 40, 50, all the way up to 99. So I'm gonna be doing that eventually, but uh, for the time being, uh, I'm just gonna, every now and then, just do a few years here and there, because it's a very time-consuming process to walk back and forth until your age goes up. But anyways, uh, before I go over to the Volmus mine, um, I want to take a look at my organization screen. So, first thing I wanna do, um, it's important when you're using soldier reserves to uh, use the... where is it? Is it a unit command? Move, formation, exchange, change the strategy. Ah, oh, there it is. It's, it's a class command. You do the uh, replace reserve... replace soldiers command. And that uh, instantly fills up uh, any reserves that have taken, like, a, a casualty. Uh, it fills them up with your soldier reserves. Now then, um, I want to take a look at the item list. I was just wondering if the hatch again is better than iron helmets, and it does not appear to be. I do have a spare armet though, so I might have to give that to someone. 
I got a boulder sword that I found and a couple great bows that I found. Light mace. I thought I had a cleric. I guess not. Uh, Iron Claw. Oh, and ninjas can use that. Francisca is for berserkers. Got a spare kite shield. Eight. Five. Nine. Three. Okay. So let's uh, let's play with our equipment a little bit. So I'll give this guy my spare boulder sword and uh, what was I gonna do? Right. Um. Okay, I can't give him a kite shield, but I can give him an armament. Uh, what about Dio? Hmm. I don't have many units that can actually take advantage of some of this stuff. Oh, I can give her the plate mail. And a... give her the hatch again. Okay. It's kind of hard sometimes to tell uh, what items, what uh, armor is actually better, because like if we look at this uh, leather armor, uh, and we look at like nin the chainmail, chainmail has more uh, physical resistance than uh, leather armor, but it doesn't actually increase your uh, number in the the top right there. You can see there's a little sword and a shield, but if we look at the item list, which is what I was doing just a minute ago see that leather armor has three resist strike whereas chainmail has five resist strike so yeah now one of the big things to consider about items is that uh, probably one of the most uh, important things actually is that uh, every class has uh, item requirements attached to it you can see them by going here to the uh, purchase item list and that lets you buy the items or uh, the equipment for the, the default equipment for any particular class. So you can see that each one has a different set of equipment uh, pertaining to that class. So you need that equipment enabled to turn into that class. So a knight needs a balder sword, plate armor, a kite shield, and an armet to become a knight. If you don't have those sitting in your inventory then you can't turn into a knight. So, if we, let's say, look at one of, no, okay, unit, no, class commands, okay, wait, no, oh yeah, I'm looking for character commands, der, so change class, and here we have, uh, when you go to a particular character, you get a list of every class that is available currently to that gender, I've got a knight and I've got a wizard, but this guy can't turn into them because if you look in the top left, it's got like a little uh, grid that shows you the, the stat requirements. To turn into a wizard, I would need more intelligence and mentality. To turn into a knight, I would need more strength and vitality. Uh, to the right of that grid, there's also an alignment requirement. Um, and then on the far right, it shows you the equipment requirements. So at the beginning of the game, I don't really have a whole lot of options for what you can, I can turn into. Uh, just because I haven't had a chance to level up at all. Um, I forgot to equip you with a great bow. Okay, so I think what I'm actually going to do now is... Move this guy from Dio's unit. Move Dio up here to the front. Uh, Dio and Magnus are are kind of interesting in that they're actually pretty good for regardless of what row you put them in. Um, so you can get two attacks even with Dio even in the back, but they're a little bit weaker. So I do want to put him in the front. Now what I'm going to do is remove 
uh, one of these soldier reserves. Go to add character. And I'm gonna put a soldier reserve in Dio's unit. And I'm gonna put this uh, the soldier that I just removed from Dio's unit. And I'm gonna put it in this uh, Valkyrie Lips unit to kind of make her unit a little bit stronger. Just because uh, nothing but soldier reserves is kind of weak. And yeah. So, uh, I think that's good for today on Let's Play Ogre Battle 64. I will catch you later.